Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger, my friends. We are here with the Choose a Main video for Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising, the sequel to Grand Blue Fantasy vs. So, in this video, I'm going to be going over every single character in this game to help you understand what the characters are like, and so you can find out which character you might like to play for yourself. Now, Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising is the proper sequel to the original Grand Blue Fantasy, so we have lots of all new characters. And a lot of the returning cast, there's a lot of new and different things about them, either from a balance perspective or things like the new ultimate skill mechanic, which wildly changes some of the existing characters. So there's a lot of fun stuff for everybody. So there's going to be timestamps in the video. So skip forward to whoever makes sense for you. And also, if you could leave a like, it would be sincerely appreciated. These kind of videos take a very long time to make. And that said, we're going to start at the start first before anyone else. We're going to start at Gran, because he puts the Gran in Gran Blue, after all. So, Gran! Gran is your plucky young anime protagonist boy. He's the main character. He's the dude what's on the box art, right? So, he's kind of the main focus point the character you're going to be looking at first, probably. And he's a good character for it, because he's a fantastic all-rounder. He's a, what we would call a Shoto. Similar to, say, like Ryu and Ken in Street Fighter. Why? Well, he's got the fireball, and it's a pretty good fireball, and he's got the uppercut, right? So these are two of the things that help make your Shoto-style character. As far as the Shoto-style goes, he's very easy to understand. He's very straightforward. He has serviceable, although not necessarily great, buttons. Although, you know, that's just how it is. Kind of the middle road character. Although he does have a little bit of an offensive slant. Not just purely balanced, because he does have some rushing forward moves. And he does retain his infamous boot. So the boot just is kind of like the big neutral skip button, the whole back and forth of fighting games. You don't want to worry about it so much. Just boot your way in, right? And if you space it correctly, not only is it pretty advantage on hit, it can actually be fairly advantage on block as well, as long as the spacing is correct. As you can see here, we have advantage frames. Now, there isn't too much, you know, fanciful about Gran. He's just a straightforward workman-like character, which is perfectly fine. The one thing to note, uh, he does have his unique trade button, right? And everyone's got their own thing. His is pretty fun in that on its own, it's just kind of a basic hit and it's a good long range hit too, which is great because he's lacking long range. But it is also holdable. As you can see here, it builds levels, right? So when it builds levels, when the attack is at maximum level, and each level the move gets better and better, but when it's at maximum level, it becomes a fully invincible attack. So while you have it fully charged, it's a good way to just kind of bulldoze your way in, right? Because you can just clear go through moves because you're invincible. So that's really good. And once again, it gives you that range. But once again, you also have the range with the boot if you can space pretty well. So it's just a nice thing. And no, you don't have to charge it all at once. That'd be a death sentence standing still that long. You can actually just hold it and then hit any button while you're holding it and he'll cancel out and he'll keep all the charge levels so you can build a level stop do your thing go back build another level stop build your thing so on and so forth till you max it out so it's just something you build over the course of the match but yeah got the fireball got the uppercut got the boot and uh that's about it grand's a very straightforward character if you're just learning fighting games or learning grand blue fantasy versus in general he not a bad bet to go with he kind of does everything pretty all right now, next up we have Jita, and you may say, wasn't she a little bit similar to Gran? And yes, very much so. Uh, she's literally the uh, lady counterpart to Gran. Uh, in the phone game, I believe, you pick one or the other, right? Uh, so she is also a Shoto. She also has the fireball. She also has the uppercut, all that kind of stuff. She does not have the boot. Instead, she actually has a Rekka series where you can chain multiple attacks back to back to back. So compared to Gran, they're very similar characters. Uh, she's not as necessarily as aggressive as him, but she does have a little bit of a better range game. Not the least of which, say, her fireball game. Her base fireballs are just a little bit better, and she can also hold them for a different animation and different fireball. Also, the held fireballs, the regular version of a fireball would clash. However, the held versions actually defeat all other projectiles. So if you are in a fireball war against another character, you can rest assured pretty safely you are going to win because you have the charged fireball. So that's one of the big advantages she has over Grant. But once again, much the same. It's a kind of a stylistic thing. You want to be a little better up close or have a little bit more plus frames, or do you want to be a little bit better from further away? 
and you'll have a slightly better fireball game to work with. Uh, stuff like the unique trait, it's literally the same deal, where you can stock it up, and eventually comes a big invincible attack, and you can also build your levels bit by bit and charge over time, and then when you're good to go, you can let it rock. Uh, the one difference is it's a hop attack, so while it doesn't quite have the same range as Grand's, you can also go over certain moves, like say, that sheep we saw, right? So they're both very much cut from the same cloth, uh, just a little bit different. Pick whichever one you want to go with. If I had to say, uh, Jita's more like Ryu, Grand is more like Ken, I suppose. Now, Lancelot. To get away from the Shoto mix, Lancelot is pure rushdown and mix-up. So he might not have, say, the biggest buttons in the world or anything like that, but what he does have is absolutely crazy movement because he can go everywhere whenever he wants. So I'm talking just his basic trade button here. His unique, he can just dash in, and when he dashes in, he can dash right out. He can cross up on the other side. He can teleport above your head, and speaking of teleporting above your head, he has a whole series of specials dedicated specifically to just teleporting above your head. So just basic quick movement is something he is exceptional at. Another thing that's tricky about the character is when you're nearing the corner specifically, he can jump off the wall, and he has multiple angles he can jump off the wall with, right? So momentum, speed, movement, all the thing, not the least of which. He can also do the whole neutral skip thing, as he has many charging forward special attacks. And don't worry for our more crazy player friends. As long as you use it properly, it's completely safe on block, so don't worry about that. But yeah, he can just kind of charge in and go crazy. And here's the beauty. So speaking of charging in, he has a fireball. Now, this is not the kind of fireball that you shoot fireballs to win the fireball war. This is not the same deal. It's a big slow fireball that he can follow up with directly after the fact. Like, he can move. He can run safely behind it. And this is part of the setup. You throw out this bad boy and you run behind it. And then while they're forced to deal with that one way or the other, then you charge forward and the mix-up begins. Also, the heavy version, nice and slow and multi-hit as well. So not only is it good for much the same reasons where you can just follow through and just run after the enemy. If you happen to trip them up or knock them down anyway, on their wake up, you can just do it and they have to wake up into it and it can be an issue. It's multi-hit, they just gotta block multiple hits. And while they're dealing with the multi-hit, you can attack, 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 go low, low, low. You can use your uh, multitude of quick teleports to go overhead or you can even say, go overhead, do nothing, throw them. Whatever it takes, whatever you can do to break them. You would not think the ice character in any given game is the quick, tricky mix-up dude. Because uh, that's, I don't know, that's just kind of video game 101. The ice guy is usually the slow guy. But here, Lancelot is quick and tricky and a mix-up flash rushdown monster. Now, Charlotta. So you're looking at this little girl here and you think, okay, this is like a gnome, halfling, whatever. And you're actually mistaken. This is E-Honda. Yeah, the guy from Street Fighter. This is e Honda. Why? Because uh, she has the squirt. And she has the butt slam. She has 100 hand slap. She has basically all the e Honda move set, uh, just disguised as a little gnome princess girl. And uh, works much the same way for the most part. Her charge, and uh, she is a charge character, by the way. You can hold backwards, hit forward, get the move. Although, Grand Blue being Grand Blue, you have easy inputs. So you can just easy input and just completely bypass the charge, right? So if you struggle with charge characters, you don't have to worry about in this game. The only penalty is there's a slight damage knock, that's it. Otherwise, you completely bypass the hold back, hit forward part of the charge. But yeah, you have what is effectively sumo headbutt. You can run forward and do the thing. And you have multiple options to do it and uh, through multiple buttons, right? You have what is effectively the sumo butt stomp where you... Just go up in the air and come crashing down on the ground. Her big many slices here is like 100 hand slap, even to the point where the uh, medium version is advantage on block. So if you both tap buttons right away after the fact, you are going to win as Charlotte. So that's really cool. The big difference here is one of the things is her unique trade button, where it's basically a big old parry. She'll set up the shield. She'll get hit. She'll take a little bit of damage, but she'll do a lot more damage to the enemy in return. So if you want to be defensive, this is a really good way to do it. And also, she's a little bit E-Honda, but she's also a little bit Akuma from Street Fighter. This is very intentional. As she has the demon flip, so it's just down, down, and a button. She'll flip in the air, and if you do nothing, she'll just land with a low. 
but just like the Demon Flip and Street Fighter, you have a lot of options. So if you do nothing, it's slow. So they'd be tempted to block, right? But say you hit the light, now it's a dive kick. And uh, depending on where you land, uh, the lower to the shins you land, the more and more and more advantage you block you are. So you really are trying to aim for something like that. And now, what if you hit medium? This is an actual overhead. So they're waiting for that low. You can wait last second, go for the overhead while they're blocking low, open them up. And speaking of opening them up, if you hit your heavy, it's an actual throw. So while this is happening, overhead, low, uh, potentially plus on block strike. There's a lot of options going on here. And your different strengths determine which angle you take. Light is higher up. Medium is more of a kind of shallow arc. Your heavy miss makes everything better. And the ultimate version, which is new, actually changes things up quite a bit. Now it's just a dedicated kind of dive kick style button because the initial hit also connects as well. So you can combo into it. So you can go into a basic string, go into the ultimate version of the dive kick and combo into it and combo after it. A lot of the ultimate skills, uh, if your heavy is your EX, then the ultimate is like a double EX, a super EX, if you will, add a lot of new tools and uh, interesting values to a lot of the already existing move sets. So yeah, she's just a little terror basically. Uh, she might look small, but uh, hits very, very hard to say the least, right? So if you wanted a python sized E-Honda, this is the character for you. Now, Percival, Percival is one of the bigger characters in the roster, and uh, he's a little bit slower to make up for that because that's how it goes, but he also has the range. He is what we call a big buttons character because he can hit you from very far away. And another thing about this character that defines him as a character is he has a stock system. And the more stocks you build, the more stocks, well, you can burn. He's a fire guy, burn joke, right? Get it? And when you burn a stock on a move, it makes a move much better. So I can say this, right? He has kind of like a basic-ish fireball, nothing too impressive. And this is the medium version. Doesn't quite go full screen. But if we say, have a stock, burn the stock, not only does it go full screen, we can see here up close to the basic hit, right? Doesn't do too much here. But if we have the stock, it's a knockdown, right? So it just makes the move better. And this is gonna be a thing that applies basically to the majority of his move set. You're looking to, through the course of the match, just build as many stocks as you can. And when you have the stocks, you're looking to burn them. Like say uppercuts, right? He has, you know, kind of standard style uppercut-ish style move, right? So here's the medium uppercut. Okay, okay. Now we'll build a stock, and now we'll burn that stock on the uppercut. And as you can see, the move is more impressive, gets more hits, does more damage. Now, one of the fun things about Percival is he has a command dash. So the dash in and of itself, it doesn't really do anything, as you can see, but he has multiple follow-ups. So he can go low for one. You gotta watch them toes. Now he also has this bad boy. I know this looks like an overhead. It is not an overhead, but what it is, is very advantage on block. So if you block this bad boy, it's here plus three frames, it's still very much his turn. And uh, this is another one of those moves where it burns stocks. And while it doesn't leave you any more advantage, it will do more damage. Other moves like say dash heavy, dash heavy for one, a lot of range as you can see here, right? Although it's quite negative, unfortunately, but say we got a stock to burn. Now it's uh, punishable to like literally not punishable, even like point blank in their face, right? So this is some of the benefits here the stocks can really change up some of the moves. So when you have the stocks up, you can get a little ignorant sometimes. That's helpful. Now, Percival, like all characters, has ultimate attacks. These attacks take your super meter as well as uh, your cooldown, just like, uh, say, a heavy attack would. And he benefits pretty heavily. So one, like, say, if you want to do the stock charge, right? If you do the ultimate version, it just brings you to max stocks right away. That's pretty cool. And just other fun things, like, say... Uh, the flame, right? The basic flame projectile. So the ultimate version, it hits, it hurts, that's great. It is also advantage on block, and it leaves a flame pit DOT damage over time right there. So you can force the enemy to stay inside of it. Like, just keep tapping them, and they'll keep losing health. They can't do anything about it, right? Just, you know, they want to get hit, because once again, after they block this, 
your advantage on block, right? So it's a very tricky situation. The one thing, I tested it so you don't have to, the DOT can't kill. It can do a pretty appreciable amount of damage, but it can't kill in and of itself. But that's a lot of damage for someone who ostensibly blocked the move, right? This is a lot of damage for someone who blocked. So that's cool. That's pretty all right. And um, the Command Dash. So he has a very special mechanic if it's used up close specifically. So normally how the you know, just stack system works is you can burn one stock at a time, right? You build it, you burn it. Easy peasy, right? So the ultimate version of the Command Dash actually lets you burn multiple at once, right? So uh, if it's done up close specifically, uh, if you do it from further out, it's just a basic hit. But if it's done from up close specifically, it'll take as many stocks as you got. So here we are with one stock. Okay. All right, damage. Now let's look at what max stocks does. And the damage. It's pretty titanic. That's like a super, right? So if you, for whatever reason, have just an excess of stocks, this is a good way to burn them all because you're going to do a lot of extra damage with them, right? So that's really, really good. Also, while we're throwing people, his unique trait is a command grab. So it's a bit different than how I remember it from the older Grand Blue. So mid-screen, you actually really don't get anything. You're plus seven, and you're too far away to connect from anything. Although, specifically in the corner, plus seven works out just great. And you can naturally combo into, like, close, medium, and a full combo, whatever. So when he has you cornered specifically, his uh, unique command grab trait, it sets you up for a full combo. You got to watch out. But otherwise, mid-screen, his regular throw is a little bit better. But yeah, so big slow boy, big buttons, that's good. Interesting screen control options with uh, the basic fireballs, dash moves, all the kind of stuff, right? Uh, you build up your stocks of flame, you burn your stocks of flame. The more flame you got, the better. Fire, fire, fire. That's what this guy is, kind of the gimmick, right? So if you like a bigger, slower character likes to build up something and then come crashing down on the enemy, Percival is probably that character for you. Now, Catalina. So Catalina, like Jita, like Gran, is another Shoto. She's got the fireball. She got the uppercut, right? So what makes her different, right? Why her over the other two? So the other two uh, are a little bit more aggressive. She wants to be more mid-range the whole game. She doesn't have, you know, big aggressive moves like Gran's boot or Jita's Rekka series, right? But she's got the big button. She's got some nice pokes. And uh, specifically stuff like her trait is literally a defensive armored shield, right? So you can see offensive moves coming, literally just you know, armor through them and punish them on the other side. And you don't have to commit, by the way. The attack always happens, but you're allowed to hold it and you're allowed to dash out either way. So you can just hold this and not commit to anything. So if you know the attack's coming, then hey, great. You can hold it dead to rights and just bop them on the other side. Otherwise, it's just a nice little shield to have. But yeah, so Fireball, very serviceable, very good. We have faster, slower versions. Uh, if you want to do the heavy version, it's multi-hit. If you want to do the ultimate version, it's a full screen beam that crumples the enemy. And since ultimates have a little bit of a time slow effect, if you catch the enemy doing moves, you can literally just do this on reaction from literally full screen and crumple them. So it's pretty all right as a fireball goes. Uppercut sweet is about what you would expect. It's nothing to write home about, but it is nice. It is invincible. You know, it's pretty cool that way. Everyone loves their invincible attacks. Uh, the other thing is she has a bit of a charging sword strike here. So you don't want to do this up close. As uh, up close, it's uh, very much uh, unsafe on block, as you can see here. That's why the big red number is there. But as long as you space it, it's pretty safe to do. I just want to hit at the tip of the sword. And at the tip of the sword, even if it has the red numbers, there's nothing the enemy can really do about it. Also have our heavy version. The heavy version actually is holdable. If you hold it all the way, it's a guard break. And there's a little bit of a sweet spot, depending on where you aim it. If you get the guard break, you can actually get guaranteed damage, right? Because uh, the guard break uh, advantage is just long enough to sneak in a light and go into whatever you want to go into. So it's nice that way. And the ultimate version of this, by the way, is just straight up armored. So you can just bulldog your way through stuff, right? But yeah, Catalina is another very easy to understand character. Very basic. Basic's not a bad thing. But yeah, if you're just looking to do the usual fireball uppercut deal, right? But you want like a cool knight lady who admittedly has some actually uh, very cool visuals. A lot of her supers and all that kind of stuff are very visually impressive, as you can see, right? So um, maybe a little bit cooler than the other Shoto kids, right? 
uh, a bit of a more mature flair, if you will. Catalina is just you know, a good all-rounder, good beginner character. Now, Lediva. This is where we start digging in some of the other classic archetypes of fighting games. So, Lediva, we're in a wrestling ring, dressed like a wrestler. Does the spinning pile driver, right? So, uh, you get one guess, and yes, this is the game's grappler. And Lediva is absolutely the primary grappler of Grand Blue. The correct size, the correct grappling, even stuff like the unique trait. The unique trait is just a run grab, right? And you can. Toss people up at all sorts of angles, wall bounce, all kind of stuff. So grab, grab, grab. I'm talking stuff like if you're in the air, we got an air 360 and she drops a leg. And yes, Lediva is a she. That's just how the lore goes, right? But yeah, she drops the leg, brother, just like Hulk Hogan. And of course, if you're in the air too, right? Uh, Lediva's got a lot of ways to take you out of the air with all sorts of grabs. Maybe not recommended to do too much in the way of jumping. Lediva does have the classic grappler splash. Very easy cross-ups, although cross-ups due to the block button, maybe not as much of a thing in this game, but still. And hey, Grand Blue being Grand Blue, save the 360 motion, not your favorite motion, right? You know, it's not for everybody. But because we have easy inputs, you don't have to do the motion at all. You have a small damage penalty, about 10%, but otherwise you can literally just hit two buttons together and get a 360, no motion needed. So if that was something that always scared you, don't worry, you don't gotta worry about it in this game. Now, speaking command grabs and damage, Lodiva has a very interesting property. So normally after the grab, you know, you dunk them on their head, they're knocked down, and you can run after them, pressure them, all that kind of stuff. You have the option to not pressure them and taunt them after the fact. You see here, big old taunt. So normally that grab did 2,970 damage. Now let's do it again. Now the grab is gonna do 3,520 damage, why? Because when you do the taunt after the grab and give up your pressure, your next command grab is gonna do more damage. Now this only applies to the next grab, just so you know, so if you whiff your grab for whatever reason, the buff is gone. But yeah, it's a very interesting thing. Either sacrifice pressure for the promise of future damage, or just don't get any extra damage, take your pressure as you get it. It's a fun way to do the grappler thing. Now another fun thing for Lediva, we got all sorts of headbutts, right? And they're more than just for show. Lodiva can headbutt projectiles out of existence just through sheer force, right? And another fun thing, uh, medium headbutt, big slow, right? Advantage on block. So if you're plus on block, all right, am I going to hit you next? Or maybe, you know, I'll go for that grab. Hope you guess right. One of the classic grappler things. Other fun things Lodiva can do has a lariat series, which are guard breaks, which leave you monstrously advantage on block. To the point where, say, like the medium version leads to guaranteed combos, right? That's really, really good. Although, all good things have a problem, right? Uh, it has to be block standing if it's crouched. Literally, it'll whiff and the enemy will get a free punish on you. But that said, Lediva benefits from the ultimate system more than most characters here. Because Lediva's ultimates are actually really, really good. One, the ultimate lariat can't be ducked. So the only weakness of the move is now gone. So even if you duck, the dive will still have significant frame advantage on you. Other things like the ultimate pile driver. It actually can be comboed into, which is very interesting because it gives it a very fun property. Honestly, for combos, it's going to scale so badly. Like, don't do it in that kind of combo. But now let's go back to that Lariat. The light Lariat, the fast one, right? It's plus five. And since we can combo into the ultimate pile driver, that means if you block this move, that pile driver is guaranteed for real. Like, actually, you can't do anything other than the universal alpha uh, counter mechanic on the actual block. If you don't do that, literally guaranteed, you have to eat crap. That's pretty cool. And once again, say, you know, it'll take like 100% of your meter, but still it's an option. If you're blocking, we can use this bad boy to break your guard. So say if you're crouching, right, regular Larry Wiss. Ultimate Lariat does not. And then this becomes a true deal, right? So, uh, you know, hope you dodged or rolled out or something, right? Because uh, it's, it's an interesting thing to do. It's interesting. I like it. And speaking again of uh, the ultimate here, once again, Lodiva, I'm just very impressed. Lodiva benefits so much more than a lot of the other characters from the ultimates. Ultimate Headbutt is unblockable. <laughs> and also, it is armored as well. Not only can you not block it, the diver can just bulldog through your garbage. 
So it's a very interesting tool. Ladive is just doing pretty all right. And now, if you don't already know the character, the one thing I'm going to sell you on this character, if this doesn't sell you on anything, right? The supers. So the grab super, the big super. We're in a wrestling ring after all, right? Off the ropes. All right, ref. What do we got? Oh, kicked out at 2.99. That's not three. That sucks. So, yeah, the ref will count you out. And, yes, by the way, if this move happens to end the round and beat the enemy, that is a three count. You better believe it. There you go. You win, right? So, as far as a wrestler goes, if you want that grappling experience, Lediva's going to be a good one. Now, in a little bit of whiplash, let's go from the grappler to the hard zoner. I'm talking so hard zoner, her basic heavy attacks a projectile, right? That is how much of a zoner Matera is. So, Matera, yo, you want to shoot fireballs? Pretty good at shooting fireballs. So, she has stock fireball, quarter circle forward, hey, you know, light medium heavy. The one thing this one is, is duckable, just so you know. But the thing is, this may be duckable, but quarter circle back, light medium heavy, uh, is a low. Now, it's not low in that you have to down back block, just that it hits low. But still, basic fireball game, yeah, we're good. Also, all this stuff works in the air, by the way. And uh, as you can see, the angles are very aggressive on these fireballs. So, yeah, watch out. They're pretty all right. Also, she's pretty proficient in winning zoning wars. Like, yeah, projectiles will clash. And yes, the heavy version will destroy other projectiles. But it's hard to do that on reaction. Because the enemy usually have time to block. Like say if she throw a fireball, I do this in reaction, but you can still block in time, right? But with the ultimate version of these projectiles, because it has a time stop effect, they will not have time to block. So you can react to their fireball toss and literally just beat them out because while they're in the time stop effect in their animation, they don't get time to block. Your ultimate destroys their projectiles and you bop them on the other side. So her ability to control the screen is pretty all right. And that's just part one, right? So she also has these upward angled projectiles here. And when they hit up high, they explode downwards. So these are actually uh, pretty fantastic at controlling space. Because, you know, I can shoot you here. I can shoot you there. I can shoot you here. Hope you didn't uh, run into me and land inside of it, right? And hey, with the ultimate love in here, a fun little bonus now. The ultimate version of this move is actually a true anti-air. So now if she catches you jumping, she can blow you out of the sky as well. Versus uh, normally, you'll get hit out of it. Like, it can hit someone in the air. Do you call it out ahead of time? Sure. But as a reactionary move, the ultimate's got your back. So, okay. All sorts of zoning sounds good, right? But uh, that's the part where, you know, that is part one. Let's go to part two. Her unique trait is a short hop and also a short back hop as well. So uh, she doesn't have to do the full jump in offense, right? She can use her trait to short hop. And then uh, literally just attack from a short hop. So you have less time to react to the jump than a normal character, which is great, right? That's good for her offense. And also, she can do it twice. So she can backwards, backwards, forward, forward. Uh, especially, say, if you want to run away. Double backwards into air fireball is pretty good runaway, right? So her runaway is good and her pressure is good because she can run away or have a better jump angle than most of the cast for offense. That's really, really powerful. Also, hey, butterflies. So what are butterflies? They don't really seem to do much by themselves, but if, say, at some point the butterfly were to get hit by one of your arrows, it's uh, going to be a little devastating because it's a giant pillar of destruction. And yes, it will hit the enemy for sure. So if it hits the enemy, they'll take the arrow damage and the pillar and will just frankly take a lot more damage in the end. And as for the butterflies, you can have different versions, faster, slower. Uh, if you want to use the heavy version and burn your cooldown, you got multiple. And they cover the screen. And as you would expect, that means you have multiple threats on the screen at once, right? Uh, that's a lot to deal with. And the ultimate version, this kind of butterfly, don't play around. Because it's actually a multi-hitting crumple. So even from, say, full screen, if I catch you with this, I can always be sure it'll get some kind of follow-up. Because I can just hit you again from range, right? So really, really good. So yeah, if you want that traditional, just, you know, strong zoning style of character with some tricks, because she has like effectively like a King of Fighters style short hop as well, 
And I can also use it for incredible evasiveness. Matera is absolutely that character. Now, Luane. Luane's a bit hard to classify. He's kind of his own deal, especially personality-wise, as he's kind of like Beavis and Butthead wrapped in the one. So, uh, out of the gate, just weird stuff like his trait. Trait, he just gets random food, and it can, like, either give him more meter or give him more health, right? So that's something. Uh, but let's just talk some of the moves, I guess, first. So, uh, one, he's a part of a trio. He has two brothers, and those brothers are part of his offense, so he can fling his brothers at you. Uh, basically, one goes low, one goes high. The one that goes high is a high high, it's on overhead, just so you know, because that'd be a little broken, right? But the one that goes low is a low, just so you know. But yeah, so he sends his bros at you. He can send both of his bros at you uh, in a multitude of ways. Um, the family is part of the weapon, basically. He also has a counterattack series, so if you like that extra defensive play, he has something for you there. Now, the thing about him and his brothers is they're kind of weird fanboys. Uh, if you do their interaction with a lot of the characters, especially the lady characters, uh, they're a little bit more on the creeper side of things. Like, say, Catalina. He's got his own little Catalina robot, right? And uh, does all sorts of various things. Like, say, shoot lasers, which is, you know, odd enough. Or, say, all sorts of rockets. You and we also got the drill version. Now, the drill version... Do not get cornered reverse-wise, because... You know, most moves in most fighting games aren't plus 185 on block. This one is. Uh, so yeah, if you let him, he will take you corner to corner with this. Now, this is the ultimate version, right? So it's not free. Got to burn that meter. And you do got to be quick on the run after the fact, right? If you're a little slow, you won't get all the way to the corner to corner. But yeah, so... The Catalina robot is uh, definitely a big part of the offense, to say the least. Now, the big showcase with this character is the supers. So, you know, everyone has cool supers, right? You know, they do the cool thing, do a lot of damage. His is, um, well, his is a lot weirder than that. So this is the human pyramid attack. And his brothers will lift up Luane. And uh, as you can see here, there's a little bit of a meter. That's how long you have to do the move. And you got a lot of weird things going on here. Not the least of which is you, we just basically have infant hyper armor. Like, you can just tank all sorts of hits. You'll still take damage, but you won't stop the human pyramid attack. And every button in the human pyramid attack does something else. So, you have a quick attack here that are highs. And it's also plus on block. You have this strange high here, good for combos. You also have an overhead. And you also have a low, right? So, you get that low. You can keep juggling up here with your fireworks and just go from there, right? It's, it's very silly like that. Uh, it, by the way, just so you know, yes, you have hyper armor, but if you use the dodges, you can actually dodge and have true invincibility as well. So, very silly, but that's just the regular super. So, the super skybound art, the low health version, we get a little bit sillier than that. Because, uh, let's summon God. Like, anime God. And now... You're a fighting game boss character. And you got fun stuff like unblockable attacks that are full screen. It obviously doesn't last that long, right? As you can see here, but um, this is part of the appeal of the characters. You can do lots and lots and lots of silly stuff that you normally wouldn't be allowed to do in a fighting game. So if this area of madness sounds good for you, then Lil Wayne is your guy. Now, Fairy. Fairy is uh, somewhat directly analogous to another fighting game character, and that is Dalsum. Because she is the long-range limb zoner. Very big buttons, as you can see here, right? And I know, okay, well, Anime Lady doesn't look like Dalsum, and well, to that I say, all right, change your mind yet? Because she literally has yoga drill, right? So, yeah, she's very much like Dalsum. Oh, by the way, just like Dalsum, if you do yoga drill just like kind of exactly at the enemy's feet, uh, the more closer to their shins there are, the more and more advantage on block you'll be. Whereas if you have the perfect spacing, you can be plus on block and fairly plus on block at that. So being the limbs owner, also have big whip attacks here. This is special moves and you can hit people from very far away. And the benefit here is if it actually connects and it is not blocked. And if you hit one of the heavier versions, you actually get to choose what's going on. You can let it explode, just get your damage. Or you can bring them in, and bringing them in lets you combo after the fact as well, right? So that's very handy. So being a threat from a range, 
one way or the other, very, very strong. Now, for some weaknesses, she does have what you would assume be the uppercut. Uh, and it, for the most part, kind of works that way, although it's not actually invincible unless you do the ultimate version. Uh, so you need to have proper timing to keep them out with your anti-airs. But to keep the whole whip control thing here going on, she also has her little buddy. So she can toss out her little buddy and uh, you have different toss arcs as well. And it can hit on the way down and after a moment, it will go live and just kind of control that part of the screen. And yes, you can hit them while they're being hit by the lightning. And there's a lot of fun things with the fairy. So uh, stuff like her ultimate whip toss, actually even on block, will bring them in, leaving you at massive advantage frames. So they better dare not hit a button. And when it comes to stuff like just air mobility, she can literally swing off the screen and just go from there, right? So uh, she's certainly very mobile, all things considered, especially with the yoga drills. Now the super game's something else. Uh, so the traditional just kind of beat you up, hit you real good. Not so much. So she has this bad boy, which is a big old ball of hope you uh, can navigate the screen well, right? She can toss this out and then follow up after the fact and be in front of it, right? Or do whatever, throw you while you're worried about getting hit by it. She can do a lot with it. And she also has an install. So while the install is live, she can chain together all of her various range moves. So normally, you can only chain together moves if you're doing like the close versions, right? But with this install, you can chain all the far range stuff just from like as far as the actual range of the moves. So if you have this up and you tap them with just like a light from far away, you can actually get a little bit of a string going on into some substantial hits. Now, of course, she also does have the big cinematic super combo, right? Because everyone does. But yeah, so if you like kind of just playing around with the length of the buttons, right? It's uh, not a traditional kind of zoner. Once again, more like Dalsum, right? Big range, big buttons, all that kind of stuff. Play keep away. Also with the help of, you know, your little fox go. I don't know what that is. I, I don't know. But a little buddy. If you like having a little buddy there on top of all that other stuff, varies the character. Now coming to Zeta. So Zeta is a mid-range character, but she's not a Shodo. So uh, some of the things here just out of the gate, stuff like the fireball, has a fireball, but it's a beam. And it's a beam you can also charge as well, right? So this hits at all points on the screen, basically at the same time. It's one of the really strong things about it. So the fireball is different and just kind of like the buttons. Uh, her buttons are all right. Uh, one of the things is her unique button here is um, if you ever played Injustice, actually, it's very much like Aquaman's Trident Rush. Uh, you can also mash it for more hits. And as you see here, has a good amount of pushback and also barely negative on block. So if you catch yourself just getting your strings blocked, you can just kind of go right into it and just completely reset the neutral. And when you reset the neutral, that means more fun things like beams or her Trident Rush. So the Trident Rush looks normal on paper, right? But the deal here is, she can actually switch directions. And I'm not just talking like forward to back. You can also you know, do forward to forward or do silly things like say forward to, you know, up back or up or up forward. You actually have always other directions you can change. Much the same say in the air. So you can hit down, down in a button while you're in the air and much the same here. So you can hit one side, go on the other side completely or, you know, stay the same direction or, you know, get back out to the other side, whatever. So if you're just looking to make yourself safe for the most part, it's very easy with these moves. And also you can do it on the ground, you can do it in the air. You can also do it on the ground going into the air, as you can see here, and kind of all the same rules apply. You hit, and then you can go into kind of whatever directions you want, right? So her mobility and just her ability to not have to commit to anything is very big. Cause she can go in for these hits. And if you see it get hit, right? If the enemy connects, right, and get the hit, Great, go forward, hit him again, get a combo, right? You can totally do that. And if you do the enhanced version, you can actually get multiple strings together rather than just, you know, one than the other. So either you can do it as a strike forward and go from the ground to the air, or you can go from the air to the ground, whatever. You have the option to just kind of dive and strike at the enemy with the spear and then go into any directions you want after the fact. Also has fun things like the counter. So this is not the parry you think it is kind of has that appeal. It's uh, actually just armored and it's a stance, a stance which there is follow-ups. So you can hit a button and get multiple follow-ups depending on which buttons you hit. Which does mean you can definitely combo into it, right? So that's the thing. 
But yeah, so if the enemy is tossing random things your way, you can use the armor just to kind of negate it or, you know, parry move if you see it coming. But you don't have to. It's also just a whole bunch of attacks. So that's another interesting layer to the character. So in a weird way, she's simple and complex. Like the actual options have available to you. You know, she has all right normals, you know, beam instead of a fireball, the weird movement. That's kind of the big tricky part to get the hang of. But once you get the hang of it, she's actually pretty straightforward and pretty simple. So if you want, you know, that mid-range character that's not specifically a Shoto, because we got a lot of those, right? But if you want to control mid-screen with some interesting options, she's that character. So Valsaraga, Valsaraga, I probably don't have to tell you, but he's uh, the game's resident big boy. So uh, due to the fact he's really big, he's extra slow. But, you know, he has a lot of the big guy things, like really big buttons. He can hit you from very far away. All of his heavies are actually chargeable. Uh, so either grounded or uh, you know, standing, whatever. Like, as long as you hold the button, you will hold the move. I get a much more devastating move in the end. That's good. He's also armored out of the wazoo. So he has his unique move here, the Soul Forge. And when he has the Soul Forge live, it gives uh, certain moves armor. Not the least of which, it gives the Soul Forge itself armor. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, but also stuff like, say, his charge heavies now have armor. So say before here... I want to hit you with my big move, but, uh, you know, you're tossing that projectile, but if I have my Soul Forge active, I'll just uh, tank through it and beat you up on the head on the other side of it, right? So, yeah, uh, he has kind of on-demand armor as long as you get the buff going first. Now, the thing is, he does have charge. Uh, he has charge shoulder, so you have to hold back, hit forward. Now, the game being the game, you can just do the easy input shortcuts, so you do not have to hold charge if you don't like charge. You'll just do a little bit less damage, that's fine. Uh, one of the big deals here specifically is he rewards correct spacing because if you hit with just the edge of the shoulder, uh, depending on what shoulder you're doing, it'll pretty much always be advantage on block. And you can hit bully people like his uh, stand light, which has a really good range and always go first. So that's really good. Also, another target of the Soul Forge, uh, specifically the uh, medium version. If you do that or the EX heavy version, you'll gain armor if you have the Soul Forge active. And he has a lot of things that are just simply all right. Like, they are not best in class, nor are they meant to be. They're there just to kind of round out his moveset. Like, he has a fireball, but it does not go that far. He has a command grab. But uh, Lediva, he is not. His grab is slower and does not do as much damage, does not give as much advantage. Although, one of the additions here uh, to specifically Rising, his ultimate version of his throw is full invincible. So he can literally just go through whatever. And like, it won't do a lot, a lot of damage, but that's very good. Uh, he's a character with weaker defensive options, if, especially if you don't have the Soul Forge active, right? So even if you don't have Soul Forge active, he'll always have this, at least now, uh, invincible command grab. And full invincible command grabs, unless you're King of Fighters specifically, uh, they're kind of rare. So uh, this is actually a very big buff for him to have something like that. It gives him to work with. Also. Uh, on that note, um, the ultimate shoulder is also armored without the need of the Soul Forge, so that's pretty handy. Now, a big part of the character is the Savage Onslaught. So you can tell by that eye glow, he's taking it pretty seriously, right? So while he's in the stance, even walking to you is a hit. Like, you have to block his steps. His steps do chip damage. And he has all sorts of attacks, like a big old high that is plus on block. Uh, that has to be ducked. If you duck it, it'll go over your head. And uh, say stuff like a big old low, which is great. Also has a lot of range. Like, you can snipe people's toes. Like technically negative, sure, but from that far away, who cares, right? And he also has things that are safe on block, even if you duck. But the thing is, a lot of these are holdable. So you hold the button, you get a much bigger hit. Stuff like that high, hold it, you get more damage. The low, hey. Spoiler, more damage again, right? But one of the really interesting ones is the heavy button in stance, this guy here. So when he dunks on you, if he holds it, comes a much bigger dunk. But the beauty is on block, on block, on block. So regular. All right, negative four, right? So da, 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 stance four, sure, whatever. However, let's say I hold it all the way here. It becomes a guard break and a very advantage on block guard break. And since guard breaks, won't well, break your guard, that means I can stick in any button I so choose. So let's find out what happens when we block too much against Vasaraga here. Oh, we're gonna die. 
He took that much damage for blocking. That doesn't feel very good. You know what? That was slow. I can stick a button through that. I'm going to attack you while that's happening. And hey, sure enough. Like, you can knock people out of it, right? It is not infallible. There's quite a bit of startup happening here. So even though I'm doing my big old charge, my big old wind up, you can just mash me out of it. Although, remember the Soul Forge, the trait, right? So, while we're doing our big boys, if you're mashing through, if I have that trait up and I have the armor, well then, mashing is not as applicable. Let's say you don't. Say you don't, right? So, I see you going to stance. All right, I, I'm just gonna mash. I know I can have just a brief amount of time, so I'm gonna go to mash. This is where he has one extra button. So, in stance, if you hit the trait button, he actually has this bad boy. And if you hold it, it is armored even without the use of the Soul Forge. So it's not terribly safe on block. In fact, it's a punishable on block, right? Uh, but this is specifically the call-out button. If you do not have your trade to back you up and you know they're going to hit buttons to stop you from you know, doing whatever you want to do, that is the way to go. So yeah, Vassaraga, slow, yes. But he's just a big old bully, right? Like, this scythe ain't for show. Like, he can hit you very far away. He does reward good spacing, he, uh, thanks to the shoulders and all that kind of stuff. He does have good tools to work with, even if, once again, those tools aren't best in class. But, you know, better to have a command grab than not, right? Especially because you can be a little gimmicky, like the heavy version of EX actually has a charge component built into it. So if people are asleep at the wheel, I can actually hit from mildly far away. But the idea is, if you see that gold flash, you just jump, right? And yeah, he's all about being big. Activating the Soul Forge, getting that armor in. The big thing about this version of the game specifically is he now has options to defend himself without the need of the Soul Forge, which is very good. So thank you very much, Ultimate Attacks. Now, I would say if you like playing a big jerk, he's your character. Uh, but one of the things I do know about the Grand Blue lore is Vassarag is actually, despite the appearance, one of the nicest characters in the entire franchise. So he's actually just a big old lovable goof. So if you like a big old lovable goof, He's the guy. Next up, we have Soriz. So Soriz is straightforward rushdown man with no tricks to rush you down. Unlike, say, Lancelot with all these like weird movement, teleports, and all that kind of stuff. No. He can only just get in by getting in. And he's not even that fast. So what's the appeal here besides, obviously, that he's jacked as all get out, right? And he's muscle grandpa. Well, he has hell of plus frames. Like, maybe he's got no ways to trick himself in, but he has a decent, you know, amount of just, like, rushing forward moves. Stuff like his Impact Knuckle, the medium version, plus on block. So if you blocked it, he leaves it directly beside you, and, you know, he can start hitting buttons, and you can't. That's great. And he has a lot of things like this, even, like, his close heavy, his plus on block, right? He has a down-down series of special moves where he slams the ground. If you want to do the medium or the heavy version, these are also advantage on block as well. He just has a lot of ways to kind of keep himself in your face once he gets there. He might struggle to get there, but once he does, he can stay there. Another thing about him is he's tougher than your average bear, as his unique trait is just him like daring you just to come at him. And the thing about that is he'll take a little bit of damage, but there is a tangible benefit. As you can see here, he has a metal system, and these are basically manliness badges. And the more manly he is, the more it's going to pay off in the end. Because, like many characters, you know, he has all sorts of special and super moves, sure. But specifically, when he's lower health, then the clothes come off. As you see here, he's just, that's how he's rocking, right? And there's a lot of benefits to this. One, even though it's a super, it actually doesn't take meter. You need to have the meter, like you need your full bar, sure, but it doesn't take it once you do it. You just need to be low health. And what happens here is this. One, you're going to gain a whole lot of new moves, and your moves are just going to get better. And two, however many badges you had at the time, that just kind of goes into the character, and he'll take less and less and less damage. Like, say this move right here from Vera. So it'll do 900 damage if she pokes us. But once we're in her install and have all the medals, the move that did 900, now only does 562, right? So it's a substantial damage lowering. Now, obviously, you're at lower health, right? But this gives you more effective health because this is your danger zone. This is where you're at your best, but you're kind of riding the red line, right? So at least this gives you more survivability. 
So while we're in our big stance here, certain moves gain new follow-ups. So quarter circle back series, just big rushing punches. So if we do another quarter circle back, we'll do this big old double fist. Actually very reminiscent, if you ever play Tekken, uh, reminiscent of Heihachi specifically. And this is also advantage on block, keeping with the theme. So that's great on block, but we also have a different move. If it connects, we now have a flying forward kick. And this is also only possible if we are in our new stance, our new install. Other things like our impact knuckle, now depending on which buttons you press, actually just get faster as well, right? So your existing moves, even if there's no new wrecker or whatever, also gain benefit. And here, just to see that the enemy is indeed blocking everything, right? You get your other super now. So this was your first super, although it's free as it were. Your other super though, uh, it's extra deadly because even though if you're blocking, this is a guard break. And uh, you're gonna take all this regardless and it's a hell of a move. As you can see, right? A lot of damage, definitely a game winning move. It's effectively a command grab in a way, right? It's a guard break, but it's an unavoidable guard break. So if you want that character to just like is go, 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 just showing how big you are. And by the way, the uh, muscle counter, as it were, also does have a follow up where he just hits you with all of his chest, right? And if you just want tank hits, smash face, like zero subtlety, zero complexity, just go, 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 attack, attack, attack. This is that guy. Now we have Zoe. So Zoe is our pet class character. So not quite a puppet, but we do have a little buddy helping us out, and that is our dragon friend. And so much so, the dragon here has his own meter, as you can see by the health. So the dragon are powerful attacks. He has multiple attacks. He can set people aflame. Uh, he has big old beams that control a lot of the screen, as you can see here. But when you run through that meter, that's it. That's all. Although, Zoe's trait is building up that meter, right? So. So a big part of this character is simply meter management on the dragon perspective. The dragon attacks are very powerful. As you see here, just wildly so, but you gotta keep spending time, make sure that meter is full. Now, thankfully, there's some good ways about it. Uh, the ultimate attack, so the ultimate version of the dragon call, is a big effing dragon, and just the act of it connecting will help build up the dragon meter. If it's lower, it won't necessarily fill it all the way, but uh, just calling it, and if you have excess uh, meter, why not, right? Just calling it, uh, it's difficult to deal with screen-wise, as you can see, because <laughs> it's a lot bigger than this little guy, right? But just the act of calling it will fill up that meter a substantial amount, so you don't have to just play defensively, right? You can also be offensive and gain some meter. Now, she is more than dragon. Some of the interesting things about her are lightning calls. So this is a down-down series of attack, and basically, depending on which button you press is where the lightning will appear on screen. So you do have to aim it, right? And if someone's being, you know, particularly aggressive or mobile, you'll have to call an earlier version to make sure they run into it. Uh, but one thing here is you can hold it. And when you hold it, as you can see here, it kind of delays a little bit. And you can make that delay timing variable depending on how long you hold it. So you can hold it basically as a threat. And when you let go, then the lightning will appear. So it gives her a good fun element of screen control. And of course, if you wanna do the heavy version, you don't like the guesswork, you can literally just set half the screen on lightning all at once, right? And the ultimate version is very interesting because if it connects by itself, it will crumple the enemy. And of course you can just get whatever hits and combos from there. But if you block it, it's a guard break up front. So if you block the first part, the actual lightning follow-up after is guaranteed. The only thing to save you from it, say in a block string, or just, you know, anything coming that way, is there's a little bit of a tell, so it'll give you enough time to hopefully dodge out of the way. If you're fast enough to dodge out of the way and see it coming, then a lot of the immediate danger is out of the way, but you gotta be on the ball, right? Otherwise, if you're a little slow, it's guaranteed free damage. Just not a lot, not a lot. As you can see, it doesn't hurt a lot, a lot, but that could be the difference, you know, if you're low in health, right? and you're just blocking, being defensive. You don't know what's up. You could just die just from that. And Zoe just benefits from ultimates a lot. Like we talk about the dragon call filling the meter. Uh, her quote unquote uppercut is only actually full invincible all the way on frame one. If you do the ultimate version, all the other versions, even if it says it's invincible, it's like not quite frame one. So that's good. But yeah, she's certainly a different kind of character with the dragon, multiple dragon options. And, you know, lightning, in fact, you can hold lightning, keep people kind of hostage on screen, all that. And even stuff like her running attacks. Her running heavy, that shield is not for show. She will use it. 
Like, she can actually armor through hits and then bop them on the other end of things. And combo after the fact, too. It's a little tricky on the timing, but you can do it, right? So, yeah, just a very unique and interesting character. And, hey, of course, like, I guess the selling point is, do you like dragons? Because if you like dragons, this is that literally a dragon knight, right? So that might sell you just in and of itself. But otherwise, she is interesting for sure. Now, Andre is an interesting character in that he's not what you think he is. So, weird little dude floating around with a big old pokey stick and plate armor, right? This dude is a defensive wall, specifically. His defense is actually pretty incredible. So, one, you know, he's got the range. He's got some buttons on him. Let's put it that way, right? The spear is not for show. But just little things, like, he has this move here. It's not a projectile. It's actually a giant poke. Specifically, it is definitely not a projectile. However, it will destroy projectiles as well, right? So in that kind of just projectile ward kind of deal, he'll win out. So if you're trying to get him, he'll just poke you out. And also spin, as you can see here. So he has a lot of ways to destroy projectiles. It's uh, multifaceted in that he can also just spin them away. So he already has two ways just to deal with projectiles. Also, the big poke, the connects has a follow-up where you can just detonate it. So, yeah, from a range, dude can get you, to say the least. The spin, as we showed, destroys projectiles, also has multiple options. So, from it, you can also throw your own projectile. But you can also attack from it, depending on your options. Different buttons give you different options. And also, you can also just, like, kind of slide on your spear. That's a low, by the way. And these options are just good in block strings, because you can do this and just easily push people out. Back to say, you know, the range you'd rather fight at. And of course, just like a basic mid screen combo. You know, very easy to do. Knock them down, keep pressuring after the fact, right? You have multiple options and they're all worth exploring. And he also has a lot of fun ways to attack from the air as well. Of course, to go back in the air uh, gives him all sorts of various angles to attack from. And his uh, unique. So, uh, as unique, you can also aim it as a bit of a dive kick. And of course, usual dive kick rules, the more it's towards their feet the more uh, advantage or at least less punishable you'll be. But the big thing here, we talked obviously defense, defense, defense. His unique trait is a parry and it's a proper parry. In that, he'll recover basically instantly, right? So anything he touches, basically guaranteed punish. Like it's part of the move set. And that's another fun thing. So of course we'll go back, we talked about, about the air version, the ground version. A lot of these leave him just barely negative. So you're encouraged to take your turn and press buttons against him, right? And that's exactly what he's looking for. You do this, you press your button, because it's your turn, he'll parry it, and then he gets a guaranteed punish off whatever button you pressed. So he is trying to trick you into taking your turn with moves that are nominally, like it's negative on paper, it says negative three right there, right? But if you press a button into this bad boy, you're gonna get parried and you're gonna die. So that's a really fun aspect of the character. Like he's kind of like the old master, he knows better than you. And he's waiting for you to be, in the wise words of a great fighting game character, predictable. And he also has a charge down to up series that's also a parry as well. When you see his staff glow, that is a parry and he has multiple options from it. And of course, this game being this game, you don't have to do the charge, you can do the easy input, right? But if you see a move coming, uh, he has a built-in trait parry, he has moves that have parry, defense, 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 like all about defense, all about range, right? That's the thing. But he does flip the script on one of his supers specifically. So his double quarter circle back super, yes, this is happening. And these are just giant spears and they'll just kind of stay indefinitely, right? How you spend these guys is doing either medium or heavy attacks. And as long as it connects, it'll burn a spear. And the thing about this specifically is every time it hits, you know, on hit or on block, I'll shoot a spear. And it's always, no matter what, gonna be advantage on block. Like, it literally cannot be negative on block. And now, you know, going from defensive powerhouse, where if you burn the meter on this install, it's literally always his turn no matter what. It's actually kind of crazy that, for the most part, uh, minus a couple moves, I guess, like crouch heavy, uh, it's always going to be your turn. Like, that's actually really cool. So that's a lot of pressure, and the more they're defensive, the more you can go and say throw them in, right? So that's a really fun aspect, just to flip the script. He'll be defensive until he gets the meter, and then all of a sudden it's kind of all of his turn forever until he runs out of these little magic spears, which is really cool. So hey, weird little armor spear man, for sure, right? Uh, 
Not what you expect of them on first sight. Certainly wasn't for me. But a very interesting and unique play style. Certainly more than just, you know, generic Shoto, generic Russian, whatever. He's definitely playing his own game. Now, Narmaya. So, I know a lot of people are going to be drawn to this character for, I don't know, at least two specific reasons, right? Uh, but those two specific reasons are going to be stances. Because she's a true stance character. She has two stances and everything changes like even her normals even her basic buttons they all change depending on which stance you're in so you're kind of almost learning two characters in one and i know that's scary a lot of people they're not the biggest fan of that necessarily but that's what this character is and it does absolutely work to her benefit so her two stances are the Free Flutter stance and the Dawnfly stance, and they give her completely different special moves. The inputs are the same, although we get a different move for each one. So say quarter circle forward attack here. Kind of a big like Iato sword slice, but in different stance. It's a sword charge. Say uppercut motion, right? Dragon punch motion. Now for the one stance, it's very much like the invincible uppercut, like you would expect, right? But in the other stance, it's actually got a parry slash armor built into it. You can see her start at the front, right? So, kind of has different uh, use cases both ways. In Free Flutter Stance, you know, if you've seen this kind of character before, you've seen this move before. This is the Samurai Showdown Ukyo Special. Now, despite its appearance, it is not an overhead. Just FYI. Just FYI. But still, it's a good leaping attack that can hit both sides very easily. And also, can absolutely be done in the air. And in Dawnfly Stance, same motion, gives you Command Dash. And it's funny. Because uh, it actually works into the other stance. So while you're doing Command Dash in this stance, you can freely do the special moves of the other stance. And then it'll put you in the other stance when you land. And speaking of that, so you don't have to just raw hit the button, switch stances. That's just your unique trade button. So you can actually switch stances when you're doing anything. Like you can be doing a special move, you can switch stances. Either way, like as long as you can just hit the button, you can switch the stance. And once you're out of whatever animation you're currently doing, you will then go into the other stance. Where this is really beneficial is like, say, your combo routes, right? You can go for special moves and strings, do your special move and immediately switch stance, and then go for more combo ability, more strings, more hits, right? And then do special moves from the other stance and keep just switching over as long as you have the combo routes going. Like, I'll show you an easy example. So just basic hit confirm into the heavy slash EX version of the Iato slice. And then we're gonna switch stance and then recombo from the other stance. So here we go, right? Just an example. So start in one stance, combo, switch stance, get a different juggle, switch back to the original stance, specifically because the close heavy is literally just a frame faster than the other stance, right? So it lets me combo into the super at the end. So constant stance switching is to a benefit for her because it lets you use the whole expanse of her move set. And she's got some other fun things like her ultimate skills, like uh, definitely lets her teleport everywhere depending on the stances, like the Ukyo swing is a full screen teleport attack on top of your head no matter where you are, it's really fun. But yeah, so stylish samurai lady, multiple stances, that's sort of your bag, you're into it, this is that character. Now, Cagliostro is a zoner, but a different kind of zoner. So the trait at bare minimum shoots like a basic projectile. And we'll get back to the trait in a minute, but uh, it's not it. So this is what we call a trap zoner, why? Because, you got all sorts of traps on the ground, very literally, right? And uh, this is all about the placement, all about screen control. So basically think of it like placing landmines down. If the enemy goes near a landmine, they get blown up. So the basic level here, Quarter Circle Forward Special Series, place all sorts of, well, traps on the ground. Uh, if you want to do the uh, enhanced heavy version, you can do multiple. So we can place our little landmines and that's great, right? How do we help supplement that? Well, what about Big ol' spikes! So another projectile that Cagliostro has is basically a big ol' spike erupting from the ground. So the light version sort of fixed. The medium version has like some tracking. And versus the, uh, the EX slash enhanced slash heavy version just has full tracking, right? It goes everywhere. And the ultimate version's uh, not screwing around. It uh, dumps a golden statue on your head, right? So that's another layer. So while you're avoiding kind of the, the minefield, as it were, 
you also have to deal with the, the punji sticks. And yes, by the way, one can knock you into the other and it's a true combo. So you really gotta watch your footing against this character. So the rule of the trap is you can have two at a time and yes, it is indeed air okay. So you also have to worry about just jumping over that kind of stuff as well, right? And we have that, but what else can we do just to be extra frustrating, right? So we can set these landmines, we can start stabbing you with sticks all over the screen as well, right? What else can we do? Hey, how about teleports? So Cagliostro has all sorts of teleports and yes, they're all air okay, by the way. And to be extra annoying, to be extra annoying, the heavy version is a hit and it's plus on block. And uh, also invincible. <laughs> so yeah, it's a uh, pretty all right, pretty all right. And uh, the ultimate version is uh, you do in the air. It'll dump just a giant throne on you and it's exceptionally plus on block. So yeah, it's a very interesting tool set. Now let's get back to that trait. We talked about the trait. On its own, it's a basic fireball, right? So, you know, trap, trap, spear, fireball, annoying. But you can hold it and just start building trash on it. And now as a fireball, it has a lot of trash on it, it gets a lot better. So needless to say, it just does more damage. Also needless to say, I would think, uh, when it comes to being on block, the more garbage you have on it, well, the more and more and more, plus on block it's gonna be. So here's the thing, while you're building this, right? It takes time, that sucks, but it's also a defensive option because while you have, you know, mines, got spears, all kinds of stuff, you, unless you're just tossing the basic rock, you have little in the way of actual projectiles, right? So instead of navigating the minefield, they're able to just throw their own fireballs at you. But the thing is, while you're building the rock, it actually destroys fireballs. So it gives you a way to defend yourself. And then, sure enough, your big extra sassy rock is going to win once it's all built up against a more traditional fireball. So it's a layer of defense for the character. So if you want to basically build like your own little personal Vietnam with all sorts of traps and weirdness, right? This is that character. Uh, not the normal style of zoning for sure, but people really have to think about how they navigate the screen against this style of character, the style of archetype. And uh, for people who are impatient, like, you know, this game gives you universal dodge, universal roll. So like traditional fireballs are, everyone has a way to mitigate it, but you really got to think about your next step against this kind of character. Now, Yule's interesting. So you would classify her as like a rushdown pressure character, but she goes about it in a very different kind of way than the average would. So one, she has a stance. And this isn't a full stance like Marmaya or nothing like that, right? This is a stance with a limited set of options. But one of the things about the stance is it auto counters, not parries, auto counters anything that's like basically not a low overhead or projectile. And the interesting thing about it is it's basically daring you to take a turn. Because if you don't kind of hit buttons, her ability to just take turn after turn after turn is ridiculous because she has so many sources of advantage frames. So the specials, one, she has kind of just like basic combo fodder where it just charges forward and beats you in, right? Uh, that's quarter circle forward series. Quarter circle back series, she'll hop. So the hop, the basic stuff here, just even the basic light hop is plus on block, right? And you can also get tricky with it. If you do the medium hop, it's a low, so you gotta watch out for that. The enhanced hop is even more advantage. And now here's where fun things happen. So a lot of these uh, can be canceled. Also has a special down down series at worst. It's neutral and uh, anything heavier than light is going to be more and more and more advantage on block. Uh, there's a little bit of startup, but um, you know, that's on you, right? It, it gives you a small chance to do something about it, but otherwise you just lost your turn. But all these specials, all of them can go, if you hit the unique trade button, you all go directly into that stance. And uh, for some of them, like say uh, the back hop, course go back series, you can do a string. Oh, I don't like what happened. Boom, I'm out. String completely safe, right? So basically everything goes in the stance one way or the other. So you can't move normally. You can only hop while you're in the stance, just FYI. But you have a lot of interesting moves. So a lot of your buttons are now just different things, right? So like Sandlight becomes this guy. We have a unique Downlight, by the way, which also launches people up a little bit on hit. Medium becomes a big plus on block move again. So more plus frames. So while you're trying to challenge, if you are passive at all, gonna be more plus frames into more attacks, all that kind of stuff. 
Now the heavy is a little bit different. The heavy is a big flame charge. And also the heavy can be held. And obviously the held properties, more damage, all that kind of stuff. And depending on how you space it, it can also be plus on block. And all these plus moves too. If it hits at all, these are like guaranteed damage, right? Like guaranteed combos, all that kind of stuff. So that's good. And the real scary thing, because obviously all these plus frames, it's going to entice you to mash at some point. You got to fight back. And if they hit as a counter hit, now all of a sudden it gives you enough frame advantage to go into a counter hit from the stance and just launch even mid screen to get like a launcher combo. You don't even got to be in the corner, right? So it's interesting stuff. And oh, by the way, while you're in stance, you can still throw people too, right? So <laughs> it's all there. So yeah, it's kind of all about the stance. And once again, this is meant to frustrate you. And if you just smash back, the stance auto counters everything. It's like not a low or an overhead. So it's a, a very interesting play style. And keep in mind, while you're out of stance, every special move, you just hit the button, you automatically go into stance. You don't have to worry about it. Her mobility is like not great, but given all the options and uh, the insanity of, uh, you know, all these plus frames all the time, I think it's worth that. For your training. So if you like a pressure-based character that's not the usual style, certainly uh, her own class of weird with the stance and all that kind of stuff, then Yule is that character. Now, Eustace is an odd boy. So one, just to get out there, he's a charge character. He's a zoner. Uh, and his basic projectile is a charge move. But once again, this game being this game, you can use the easy input shortcuts and just kind of bypass all that. You'll do a little less damage, but not that much less. But yeah, uh, one, uh, say the basic shot, right? It is uh, holdable. And if you hold it, it comes basically a beam and it will destroy other projectiles. And he has a lot of weird moves that come at weird angles as you can see right and uh, these also can be held multiple angles uh, it's kind of oddball stuff and depending on the strengths you can get different things like that right you can also toss some grenades or you know, otherwise explosives and they come at different angles different kind of stuff and also you're gonna just attach it to you and if you shoot the explosive well, it explodes right uh, and that's one of those things uh, actually will not explode on its own. If you do the heavy version, you do actually have to hit them. So if it goes through the time limit, it just goes away. But for a character that's, you know, big gun, lots of guns, uh, he's actually uh, got a lot of close combat tricks. Like even his trait is all about just sticking the gun to someone shooting, right? Uh, and to that point, he has a special move series called Close Combat. So it's a Corsica Back series. And it's just a command dash, right? So the thing about the command dash is you've got options from it. And uh, depending on the button, the command dash can also attack, right? But it's your choice if you want to attack or not. And it's tricky. So you get like a basic little stab here. Uh, one of the things you can also go for a quick sweep or just a full on retreat while shooting your rifle, right? Or an actual invincible uppercut. And uh, the break version, by the way, uh, the ultimate version is just that right out of the gate, so you have something invincible to work with. But yeah, so it's very tricky, but trickiest yet. So once again, all sorts of attacks, all sorts of options, right? Or run away. But one is you can cancel the dash early and then just like go for a throw or something, right? So like off a of basic block string, right? Now, am I going to go for the dash version with the attack? And am I gonna do more follow-ups after the fact? Like when am I gonna hit buttons? If I hit buttons there, you're gonna lose. So that's no good, but then, you know, what if I just went for the dash, cancel the dash, and threw you instead, right? It's difficult to know how to fight against that stuff. So, once again, a character with big rifle, nominally a zoner, is very tricky up front as well. So, that's uh, kind of interesting. Also, some of his heavies, uh, they're double tappable, where you can attack, do nothing, or attack, hit the button again, then shoot after the fact. So, also, another bit of a will-I-won't-I game. Especially because it's very heavily delayable. You can do it right away or just kind of let it rock. So very tricky for a zoner. And once again, too, like the fireballs come at weird angles, especially if you want to do the ultimate version of the move where it just fills the screen with trash, right? Uh, so certainly unique as far as zoners go. So traditional fireballs are a go. Weird up close trickiness is a go. Uh, this weird rifle you should be using this this is a regular gun right like that's a big old move isn't it but yeah so very interesting character so now our next character here is seahawks and he's the exact opposite he's very straightforward 
Uh, he's a weird mix of like Wolverine and like Leona Hydern from King of Fighters. Now, some of you might say that's unacceptable, but you know, the facts are the facts, right? So this guy is aggression, 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 aggression. Like he does that friggin' ninja run, right? Like he is not competing from like anywhere further than, you know, in your face. Uh, not the least of which he has a whole, you know, Berserker Barrage Rekka series where he has a lot of different options to go and just be tricky. And not the least of which he has a turn steal as well. Like, hey, you do your thing, get your combo. Awesome, get some hits in. Sure, that works out great, right? However, say you got blocked. That's no good. I don't want to be negative. So he does have, uh, on top of all these strings, things that can, say, push you back a little bit. You know, depending on the character, depending on the situation, maybe you want that. Or if you go for the up option follow because there's multiple follow-ups, you can go and be plus on block, right? Depending on the button you press, you'd be more and more plus, although it's slower and slower every time you do it. Of course, that begs the question, well, I'm going to do an uppercut. And now here's another thing. He has mobility backwards. So he can just do that. Oh, I got blocked. Peace out. Or conversely, if you want to be tricky, teleport to the other side. So, uh... He's a bit of a blender from here, right? Just And this is just basic Core Circle 4. Nothing uh, tricky about it, right? And he's got so many options from here. Like, oh, if he gets a hit, okay. Uh, maybe I got blocked. Maybe I want to try to steal a turn. But maybe I know they're going to try to stop me if I steal a turn. So maybe I'll just backdash out and then punish whatever they try, right? There's a lot of work with here. And that's just well, that, right? So he also has a lot of Core Circle back offense. That is like leap based, and this is where kind of Leona stuff comes into play. And as you can see here, depending on how you space some of this, he can be also advantage on block, keeping with uh, the Berserker theme of the character. And of course, if you don't want to space, just do the heavy version, and you're just leap plus frames, like Bob's your uncle, like almost certainly not going to react to it fast enough, and then just go like attack, 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 go from there. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, all this stuff's close. That's hard. Can I just zone them to be plus on block in their face? And funny enough, yeah, you can, right? So he has a clone attack. This is his trait. And if it gets blocked, it gets blocked. Uh, the one thing, it's not like a fireball in the traditional sense, as people can actually just swipe it away, just so you know. But yeah, the held version, the regular version is basically a projectile, right? You just toss it out. The hell version will teleport you to the enemy if it connects. So even if you're far away, you can be in smashing buttons pretty as you please real quick. And of course, there's multiple ways too. He also has a, like a wall dive series. So it's charge, down to up, and also, well, some block. And this game being this game, once again here, you can use easy inputs. You don't have to charge. Uh, especially for a move like this, it's almost certainly better to do it on demand, right? If it connects, you'll lose a little damage, but just being able to, like, evade, run your way back in, and almost always be plus on block. Like, it's only not plus if it hits at the absolute top of the opponent's head. But yeah, there's not a lot of subtlety to this character, right? Uh, versus Yule that has to use the stance for a lot of weird things. This guy is just... He just runs in, dripping with plus frames, and if you're too lazy to run in, you can slowly teleport yourself in with a projectile. This guy is just attack, 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 go, go, go. There is no chill with this character. There is no calm game plan. You just go in for the kill. So if you're looking for your dose of anime Wolverine, this is that guy with a cat boy ninja flavor. So Vera is an odd duck. One, I'm just going to do this out of the gate. Is this your kind of character? Like, kind of like that crazy anime lady? That's exactly what she is, okay? Like, that probably sold you or not out of the gate before I even explain how she plays, right? She is that character. But that said, uh, she's an install character. And uh, the install is pretty severe and it's also permanent. So by herself, well, you know, she has all right normals, like, you know, workmen, like, yeah, maybe a little better than most of the cast, but uh, a lot of her specials are, like, kind of basic. Like, you know, she has a DP, uh, Actually, uh, specifically, quarter circle back medium is pretty good because it is plus on block, right? Um, but yeah, um, the only thing that's really, uh, without the install, really impressive about her is her not projectile. She has a little summon, right? 
and you'll call it and then it'll go travel uh, far depending on your button press and then do multiple hits. And the thing is, after the initial summon, you're free to do whatever, right? So the enemy kind of has to deal with it. And the thing especially is, say you do something basic to knock them down, right? And when they're knocked down, then you can set it up and then just kind of keep attacking. Or you can just do it by itself too, right? It's just easier if they're knocked down. But that's the big unique thing is like kind of delayed time attack where you can do it and then pressure after the fact. That is nice, legitimately. But the main event is the install. So the install, there's two ways about it. She has her unique trait, which is actually a command grab. Uh, the thing is, it's slow as sin. Like, it's not so slow it'll never happen, but it is pretty slow. Or you can spend the meter to do it. So for our sake here, we'll say we land that grab. And now, transform so now what do we got going here besides like some very impractical plate mail well um i'll give you the jump scare first how about that people who hold this pose something's up especially when that happens that is not the kind of movement that's in this game uh as i've gone through a lot of the characters you might notice like oh there's no air dashes like guilty gear or whatever uh versus like I'm teleporting around like I'm a freaking Marvel character or something, right? So the install is pretty big. Not only for the movement, but also makes basically all of her specials better across the board. Uh, gives her more damage on a lot of her special moves. Uh, she now has like a spirit halberd she'll use in a lot of her attacks. And now quite a few of her attacks as well. The follow-up you normally do, you can just not do it. You can hold the button and cancel out into a dash. So before, if you did a move like this, you'd have to commit to the ender, get blocked, die. But now you can hold the button, do nothing, fake out, throw. And, uh, you know, and then like, okay, if they're going to throw me, I'll hit a button. But then this is also a natural frame trap. So if you hit a button, you get blown up by that. So there's uh, some interesting stuff there. Also, a little buddy gets better. And also a heck of a lot more uh, lightning and lasers as well. Uh, her trait now just puts her in the air. And we have that weird air moon that is shown. But she can also just do an actual anime air dash. Once again, this is not an air dash game, but her air mobility gets really big when she has the install up. And once again, it's permanent. Once this happens, it happens. So if you're lucky and say you land that throne like near the start of the round, like it's all upside. You didn't have to burn the meter or anything. Like you can just do this and go nuts out of the gate. That's really strong. Other things that are really strong while in this mode, her uppercut. Regenerates fast, but it's completely 100% safe on block. It's full invincible, full invincible, just like an uppercut you would expect, right? But it's a thousand percent safe on block. There's only one weakness in that there is a small gap between the first and second hits. So you could say spot dodge or uh, perhaps do something invincible yourself. But, you know, you don't have a lot of warning. So if you're not immediately on the ball, she can just do a full invincible move with zero consequence because it's only negative six and there's a lot of pushback on this, right? So that's kind of crazy that she gets an invincible move that uh, is basically purely on your reaction. If you can't catch her between the first and second hit, she'll get away with it every time. So that's really nuts. Normally you do the uppercut in any given game, the reversal, you get blocked. That's donezo. For her in the install, no, she gets to keep going. So yeah, a serviceable character with a very interesting projectile slash pressure tool. But once you get the install going, that's when the really fun begins. And you get to do a lot of things that other characters in the game just simply cannot do. Also, uh, I don't know much about the lore, but there's definitely a personality shift. Uh, while she's in the install, she's a lot more serious versus like crazy Yandere lady, I guess. Uh, still crazy in her own way, I guess, but a different facial expression kind of crazy. But yeah. This sounds good. This is that character. Now I'm gonna confuse you here with Anila for a second, because you think you're looking at like anime sheep lady, and you are in a way, but you're looking at Terry Bogard. Yeah, Terry Bogard, you know, from Fatal Fury, King of Fighters, Smash, I guess. Actually, like a lot of games, because he's a guest character in a lot of games. So she's actually a very direct reference to Terry Bogard, and it's absolutely on purpose. Don't believe me? Are you okay? Buster Wolf, let's go. Except with sheep instead, right? 
Uh, this is intentional. It's apparently been a thing in the actual Grand Blue game for a while, but she is Terry Bogard. Hey, Power Wave, but as a sheep? Like, even the heavy EX version is three hits exactly like EX Power Wave, right? Hey, Burn Knuckle? Yeah, kind of, actually. Uh, it's just with a sheep instead, right? Like, she is Terry Bogard. It's just a sheep version of Terry Bogard. So, besides the Terry Bogardness, one, she has great normals. Like, uh, just her basic buttons are very long range. Uh, she has the sweep of the gods. Like, her sweep hits from this far away, which is very far away. Her down heavy is a massive, monstrous no fly zone. And don't worry, she has an actual uppercut that's invincible too, right? Uh, but yeah, the big buttons are there. So now to talk the specials. She has projectile sheep. Like she's a very silly character. Like listen to the noises. Like it's very silly, right? Different speeds, uh, different hits depending on the button. The ultimate version is actually legitimately fantastic because it just fills the screen with these bad boys. Like it's actually difficult to get around and God forbid it connects, right? Because if it connects, she can actually use those gigantic normals to connect after the fact too, right? So that's really handy. Quarter circle back version is just a big sheep charge and it's like completely safe on block. Not only is it only negative two, it actually pushes you back a little bit and heavier versions are plus on block. And you can also cancel out, just do the input again and she'll like dismount from the sheep and send it flying as an actual projectile, which is very interesting. Now it's not quite a full screen projectile, but still all things said, it's, uh, it's an option. More options are better. And uh, she can also just brute force her way in too, depending on what other buttons you want to hit. As mentioned as well, she has uh, the uppercut suite. So just full invincibility. Don't jump. I'll mash on you, right? Like it's really good. And now here's another thing she inherits. So once again, Terry Bogart, King of Fighters. So she can short hop. So she does not have to commit to the full jump like other characters that do various moves. Her down down series of moves is literally just bouncing off a sheep and uh, kind of go from there. So different buttons give you different angles, like especially say the heavy version, very short, very shallow. Like she can almost basically like instant overhead you almost depending on the character, right? So she can just really go in. And um, one of the things too, special, right? That means she can jump cancel a lot of her block strings. So you can go in, okay, you block, but it's still my turn in a way, because I'm going to do this, immediately go to above you and just attack you again, right? And once again, with the different angles too, the uh, ultimate version, basically lets you a full screen hop too. So if you were like going into a fireball war and her fireball war capability is not as good as some of the other characters, you can throw one and then anticipate a fireball back and immediately go blah and just be on top of them from full screen. Very powerful. But yeah, big buttons, solid all rounder move set, literal Terry Bogard references, right? So uh, what's not to love? As a newcomer, Anila is definitely one of the cooler characters, especially if you're a big fan of the silly like I am. So Siegfried, full plate armor, giant Zweihander sword, almost like another Siegfried from another fighting game I know. Huh, weird about that. And hey, speaking of other fighting games I know, are you a fan of Injustice? And specifically, are you a fan of Bane? Because... Siegfried can pump the venom and it kind of works the same way. So he sacrifices health for a stack of his buff. And you see here, stack one, you're going to have it a long time. It's very, very long lasting and basically works the way you would expect. So say stand heavy. Okay. So 1400 damage. We get one stack going on. Now it's 1540. We got a bit of a buff, don't we? And stack one's good, but say we want two stacks in. Oh, okay, that hurt a little bit too. But now, 1680. And it's also draining a little bit faster. But now, mm, take another hit. Level three, 2100. So 2100 is a pretty far cry from the original 1400, right? So the more you're willing to sacrifice your health, the bigger the buff gets. So you want to play it safe. You're going to stay at level one for like, a very strong portion of the match. And don't worry, getting hit doesn't like drain the meter or whatever. It's there. So it just stays. But it's not as satisfying necessarily as the really big hits from the level three, right? 
but that's one of the core mechanics. Trade your health in for actual just straight up buffs. But of course, he has a lot more going for him than just that. Like say his very unique projectile. So the basic just light version is, well, admittedly pretty normal, right? The one thing about his whole projectile series that's different is you can't roll through them. Normally, like that's the point of a roll, right? You dodge through a fireball, gain some space or some other move, whatever. This one specifically, no dice. You cannot. That's just specifically one of the unique properties of this series of moves that you cannot avoid it that way. And heavier version, you can see here, uh, slower startup, slower travel time, but uh, owning a lot of real estate on the screen. Like you're not meant to win zoning wars necessarily, but the various different versions of the move all just give different uh, ways to work around, right? It's not a zoning character, but it is a very strong tool. Now, other things, he does have like kind of like the stock standard uppercut, right? So that's good. You know, the characters that don't have that wish they had it. Now, another thing, Quarter Circle Back Series. So these are like some big monstrous swings, right? And the thing, uh, especially with the ultimate version, is unblockable. Also has super armor startup, right? So this is one of those catch you sleep at the wheel moves. If you're not thinking quick, you'll get blown up and destroyed in real fast order. And the thing with these moves here, especially considering their titanic range, is they are all, like as you can see, negative four of this range, very safe on block, right? And that's just a nice little feather in the cap. And of course, what's the most safe on block? Unblockable is the most safe on block. Another cool thing is, like say another Siegfried from another game, he's got some sword stances, although the initial stance does have an attack tied into it. But that kind of works out, kind of works out because you got a lot of things to do for him. Like one, you no know, basic attack, that's great, but also parries. So if you try to take your turn after uh, you say to yourself, just block that kind of move, you might get parried for it. And if you do get parried, you get booted, so gotta watch out. So okay, 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 okay. So I might get parried, so maybe I'll wait out the hit, right? It's whatever. But the thing is, one of the options, if you want to wait stuff out, whoops, command grab. That's one of the options he has out of it. It's a little slower, sure, but uh, it's just fast enough that you will catch people sleeping with this, right? And there's just more follow-ups as well, like this bad boy, very negative. Uh, this one you're going to want to use as a combo. This is not, you know, block pressure, because it leaves you punishable, like, directly in front of their face. So he created a little bit of a guessing game. Strike, parry, grab, all the kind of stuff on block. And, of course, naturally on hit. You can just, like, directly go into attacks, right? So, whatever. That, that's the easy part. Now, another fun thing he can do with his health. So, we already seen the power-ups, right? That's the trait button. But he has a super where he can sacrifice half his life. And then he gains a permanent buff. So, also, it's glowing, right? So, something serious is happening. So, what happens here? Well, certain moves just get better. Like, literally, we'll just do more damage. And that's permanent, once again, right? But also, take a look at the health. He can now, like, kind of vampire your health away. So certain moves, like, say, heavy attack, certain specials as well, uh, they're keyed that on hit or on block, or on block, by the way, they will start stealing health from the enemy. So if you can turn the tides a little bit, you can actually potentially be at a higher health value than when you gave up your health to begin with. So Siegfried has multiple ways to sacrifice health for damage output. And that's very interesting. Also... He has an anime flashback built into his super, right? He'll go for the kill stroke, remember his friends, and then go for a regular hit, I guess. So yeah, very interesting concept for sure. If that sounds like it's up your alley, you know, damage no matter the cost, I'll sacrifice all my health just to hit you a little bit harder. This is that guy. Grimnir, so Grimnir is one windy boy. So, you know, for a dude in plate armor and a giant F off just, Lance, right? Like you'd think, okay, maybe you're thinking one way, but nah, man. This guy's mobility central and just wind central. Say something is basically this. Like he has this like a little wind fireball, right? You know, not blowing your mind. Sure. But what if it did that? What? Uh, what, you know, if it did that? Where it looks like it's slow, but now all of a sudden, whoa, it goes uh, way faster. What if it stayed in place? You actually control a lot of these things. So uh, his projectiles, just one of the many things, are modular. So it's even as simple as this, like I throw a fireball. You know, I throw a fireball, you want to jump. Okay, you want to jump? Whoops, 
my fireball arced upwards into the air and catch you jumping, right? These are one of the things you can do. Uh, just the basic projectile series is very interesting for this character because you can basically do it, do it and send it even further, have it stay in place, and it'll sit there for just a little bit, right? Enough that you can recover first and just do things, which is very cool. Also, what's really neat too, the heavy, slash the X version. Stuff like, say, if we want to stay in place, it'll stay in place a pretty appreciable time. Same if you want to send it up high in the sky. It'll actually stay there for a hot minute too. So uh, you can get very tricky with this stuff. Now here's where we get silly. So down, down special. What is this? This is a wind crest. And we go near it. Okay, it does something. What does it do? So it changes this trait. This trait is actually all about the wind crest, basically. So normally, kind of like just a hop. Nothing too much. But when you have a crest up, it'll bring you to the crest. No matter where it is. Uh, you can be like in front of it, behind it. It'll do its best to just bring you to a crest. And when you're on a crest, then hit any, say, of eight directions and your trade button, and you'll go in that direction. It doesn't matter if it's on the ground. It could be in the air. Hey, who wants to play some Marvel, right? So with this bad boy, pick any direction, up, down, left, right, or any of the diagonals, and hit your trade button, and boom, you go in that direction. One of the fun things here too, say we do the heavy version. Oh, hey. And when you know it, they all can chain together, right? You can keep going as long as they're on the screen, period. So as long as you got some of these bad boys to work with, you can keep going over and over and over and over and over, however you want to go. It's just silly like that. And of course, there's other special moves too. You can twirl like a big twirly windy boy. Uh, all sorts of like kind of like uh, cannon drill style attacks as well. And a very interesting multi-hitting series, uh, air only. That can also like change his jump arcs and stuff. So that's interesting. But yeah, mobility is the name of the game to say the least, right? The fact that like. Uh, it's very rare. Once again, this is not an air dasher, as you would call some anime fighters. And yet, he can air dash like crazy in any direction he so chooses with this stuff, right? So, uh, if you're looking to be one windy boy, uh, with a little bit of a god complex as well, it would seem. I don't know the character so well myself, but a uh, silly guy, very high of himself. And you want that Marvel vs. Capcom movement? This is that character. Now, Nier, one of the newer characters of the series here. So Nier, by herself, doesn't look like much, except for the little part where she has very literal death on her side. So she is the game's puppet character, and she has a very unique way of working. So there's multiple ways to summon the puppet. You can talk from all sorts of angles, right? And actually, the puppet has all sorts of moves, as you would expect. But the puppet also has a counter. So you can see here, the counter right below our health. This is the well, puppet counter. So if you do regular puppet moves, it does nothing in and of itself unless you want to do the enhanced heavy version, right? At which point, move is better, right? So it'll take one stock away. But you're also allowed to chain all sorts of moves together. And every time you chain a move past the first one, then it'll use another part of your stock. So, this is a very interesting part of the character because it can really dictate your offense. And while well, you notice the number, well, it keeps going down, right? So it does have an eventual end state. So say we are here, we're going to just burn through all of our stocks. So here we are at two stocks left, right? So, all right, doing the EX, did one, did another EX. Oh, we're out. And now, we got to wait for that bar to rebuild. And there is nothing for it. You got. No moves. You just gotta deal with it, right? But the weird thing about this character specifically is there's a benefit to being very low but not out. Specifically here, various special moves. And uh, by the way, she's like very sad lady in all of her special moves, right? The less of the stocks you have for your puppet, the better her special moves, her super moves rather, get. So let's do, say, basic string into the big fancy super. Oh, she ain't looking too happy there. Okay. And 5,600 some damage. All right. Now let's really get low on those stocks. Now we're at one stock. And uh, the animation is going to get a lot worse for one. She's not having a good time. Let's put it that way. 
Oh, and now it's over 8,000 damage, right? So, yeah, uh, that's one of our key things. It's almost like a desperation mechanic. The lower you are on stock, but as long as you're not out, the more damage your supers will do. And, of course, once you're out, you're out. And then you kind of got to play defensively. Let's put it that way. Because you literally don't have special moves anymore besides normals. Now, to be fair, like some of our normals, like our stand heavy, are not bad, actually. Uh, but uh, yeah, you gotta play on the careful side of things. So as the main summon, also her unique trait is an attack that will unsummon death here, and uh, you can hold it for just like, bigger damage, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, death has four attacks: quarter circle forward, quarter circle back, down, down. And also an uppercut style move. And you can just take a bunch of these and just kind of chain them all together because that's how that works, right? The more you do the chain past the initial hit, the more of the stocks you'll drain. But then, of course, obviously more pressure, more combo damage, more everything, right? So that's kind of what you're doing. As far as, like, puppet character goes, um, since you're not, like, independently controlling a second character on top of yourself, she's actually one of the easier puppet characters I've seen in a fighting game. And honestly, I like that because I... Me, personally, I find these kind of characters usually pretty intimidating. But this one sort of makes sense. You do the move. It's almost like a basic special. Uh, you still have to control where she is via her uh, you know, specials and all that kind of stuff. But once you get them, a lot of the moves just kind of, you know, chain into each other, make a lot of sense. Easy go, right? So uh, other than the fact that the character itself is, like, constantly having a mental breakdown, which is, uh, I don't know the lore on this one, but uh, not having a good time, I guess. But yeah, very interesting character for sure. Now, Beelzebub, very interesting character. A uh, very good mishmash of just a lot of weird traits. So like one, like sure, okay, a fireball. Wow. Yeah. Looks a little impotent compared to some of the other moves I've shown you over the course of this video, right? But hey, you can hold it. Oh, two hits, all right. Or you can just fill the screen with trash, right? <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, one of the things you can do. Uh, now, obviously, this is telegraphed a little bit. And anything that's telegraphed, you can just, like, dodge through. Unless you're Siegfried. That's one of his weird traits. But, you know, you can also delay this a bit. So if you uh, see this and try to dodge right away, dodge right into it. So the projectile game by itself is already just very interesting for this character. And this is aesthetic. He's, like, summoning garbage wings? I don't even know dust wings. I don't know. But what I do know is he can feel the power of the earth because uh, he's got the condor dive uh, the t-hawk special and this is a really good move you can do it while jumping backwards as well um a lot of modern fighting games do not let you do forward advancing air moves while jumping backwards this game will and of course what's really important here is if you aim it correctly nearer to the feet you can definitely make sure this is advantage on block and if you both mash at the same time you're gonna win i always like that and, of course, there's other specials. Like, he has a big old spin and uh, can hit his low as well. So, that's interesting. But let's go to one of the main events here. He's got a gravity pull. And that gravity pull here has a hit attached to it. And that hit, as long as it's not point blank, is always going to be advantage on block. So, the one thing... Now, I already know you know this is strong, right? Um, this is... Uh, it triggers cooldown on the ability regardless. You don't have to use... Uh, the ultimate version or the heavy EX version, it's always going to trigger the cooldown because it's strong, y'all. So the thing, uh, there is some range values. So like the light version can't exactly pull the one from full screen or anything. Although the uh, heavy version basically can. Uh, there is one weakness because obviously if I can just do this and I'm plus and like we both match buttons, I'm always going to win, right? So how is there an earth? Is there a weakness to this? Well... If you see it coming, you can react appropriately and just, like, roll through it or do the spot dodge or whatever. It all depends on your sense of timing, though. If you're slow, like, you can technically do it, but uh, Beelzebub can be so plus that he can still punish you for it, right? So there's an element of timing, but very powerful. You know, moving people against their will is always a big thing in fighting games. It's always strong, especially when it's on the back of I'm plus on block and I'm going to mash buttons I'm always going to win. And, oh, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah! Especially on the back of... He has a super command grab! And there's no jumping it after the flash. So, if you're just patient, wait for the button or something, you can get blown up and die for it, right? So, that's kind of crazy. Oh, and we're not even done being crazy. So, okay, plus on block. Great. 
But, you know, I can avoid it. Okay. But, you know. Well, what, are, what are you going to do for me from over here? I don't know. How about this? Guaranteed damage. What? Because this is a guard break from full screen. And no, it's not one of those deals where you can duck it or whatever. It's a true guard break. If this touches you anywhere on the screen, you are taking guaranteed damage. Even if you're in the air. Like, you can be jumping. You're gone. This is very literally. If you do not... Uh, be on the ball and do this dodge or the roll or whatever to get past the initial like suction effect. Since it's a guard break, it's literally guaranteed damage anywhere on the screen. Now, as you can see, it doesn't do a lot of damage. Very much by design, because uh, almost guaranteed damage on a very fast reaction check anywhere on the screen is kind of messed up. And uh, this is one of the things I like about the character. <laughs> uh, this is his ultimate version of the move, right? So ultimate skills, pretty good in this game, y'all. All right, so we got weird projectiles. We got command grab supers. We got gravity pull-ins that leave us plus on block if we do it correctly, right? What else can this guy do besides you know, also condo dives, right? Oh, how about just teleports? So his trait's just a teleport. And he actually recovers quite quick as well, right? So if you're just looking to just get out of the, you know, near in the corner, it always goes a fixed distance. So it's not one of those deals where it's like tied to the enemy. It can be in front, it can be behind. It's just always a set distance, right? So yeah, a teleport. This guy's just a weird grab bag of abilities that on their own don't seem synergistic, but well, they're just all strong as a singleton, right? So why not? A bunch of random abilities all chained together? That sounds like Beelzebub the devil to me, I guess. Uh, definitely an odd dude, but I like him. I like him. Now we're getting near the end here. We have Belial. So Belial's a sassy boy, as you can tell just by his walk cycle here, right? He's a sassy lad. And what earns him the right to be so sassy? Well, how about that projectile? I know it doesn't look like much, but uh, you know, what if we add some sass to it, right? Oh, that's weird. What? So yeah, uh, he can take basic projectiles and change the angles of them. And he also has, you know, an upward angle projectile. And he can do much the same. Whoops. Thought that one was going to miss. Nah, it's actually going to hit you in the head. Or conversely, say you ran under it. No, let's reverse course for a hot second. So now he can play around with very interesting things just like this, right? His space controls are uh, very different than the average character, as you can tell just by the angles you're allowed to do. One of the fun things too, uh, the heavy version can let it hit and then do much the same after the fact. So you get both your hits in, and then you can change the angle too. And the ultimate version says, let's skip the middleman. Let's just go right into some craziness, right? And speaking of some craziness, his trait. What is his trait? Now, if you are unaware, his trait here uh, says, give daddy some sugar. He is exactly that character. I'm not going to lie to you. So while you're doing give daddy some sugar, if he gets hit at all, he immediately just teleports above the enemy and will just stomp him on the head. And rest assured, this is on everything. How about a sheep from full screen? Give daddy some sugar, whoops, smash you in the head. And say, if they actually recovered fast enough to block, like in this situation, barely negative on block. So yeah, he can just kind of dare you to do anything, pretty much at any point of the screen. And if you try, then daddy comes and gives you the boot. Now on the flip, he has a move with a very similar, although not exactly the same animation, where he just walks forward. And this is a command grab. And a big hit. Now, to be fair, this move is legitimately glacial. Like 50 frames for the medium version. If you get hit by that, you deserve it. There's no other words about it, right? It is not fast. Even the fastest version, which would be the uh, heavy version, 27 frames is still slow by command grab standards. But if you're doing this and it's like, okay, I'm not going to hit him. I'm just going to wait him out because I know I'm going to get countered. This is similar enough, especially in the startup, just to catch you sleeping at the wheel. And specifically, the ultimate version is exactly the same animation. So if you really want to trick people, that'll really trick people because uh, it's the exact same move. In more ways than one because he'll also do the stomp. So if you are passive... If you do the ultimate version of the grab, he grabs you. And if you're active and hit him, he does a stomp, right? So it's literally best of both worlds. So yeah, weird P 
parry, I guess you want to call it. Command grab, mixture synergy, sending your fireballs everywhere. Uh, also, the heavy button can just leave it spinning in place. And if it's spinning in place uh, with a heavier button, it can be there for quite some time. And nothing quote unquote fancy, but he just has a basic special here. Of course, we'll go back. That just gives you a really good just attack and knockdown. Leaves you very advantage on hit. So if you're, you know, just basic combo. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just like, you know, uh, move, move, move. Get it. And you just get so much pressure after the fact. That's really, really good. So the game plan, I don't know. It's almost even simple, I would say. But, you know, he's got the tools. Like, his buttons are serviceable as well. Like, he's got, you know, good stuff to work with. He's a very unique character because, you know, most fighting game characters don't fight like that. Now, to lead in to the second character, so if we do the big fancy super, see him get some tattoos and some devil horns, all that kind of stuff going on. Some nasty business, right? Some nasty business. This is his own separate character. So Avatar Belial is very different. One, he's a low health character. Cannot take a hit that well. You know, balance reasons, right? And uh, another thing is he sacrifices health for a lot of his moves like a uh, heavy ultimate moves uh, certain other trait moves so he's low health and he's burning a lot of health so how is this fair like what makes this worthwhile well you know that's a fireball from sheep lady right you know a humble fireball from decent character right so what's a fireball from avatar belial like oh it's literally the screen it hits low it hits mid it hits uh, every possible angle yeah so one humble little sheep versus this as a basic fireball that's why he's a low health character so just to put it out there and uh he's also got some other flavor you know played a little too much marvel he's got gamma wave built into him right learn that one from the hulk and these are the, some of the things that are fun here so if you want to do say the heavy version so this is a move that takes some of his health. As you can see here, look at his health. Lost some health, but it's a vastly improved move. One of the things about it, a uh, very advantage on block. Speaking of advantage on block, he has a full screen beam as his basic trade button. And no matter what, even point blank, always advantage on block. Now it's higher, so you can neutral duck it. Just like go underneath it, right? But otherwise this is just a full screen beam that, you know, is a very powerful fireball in and of itself, let alone, you know, this guy, right? So screen control is really good. So some of the other stuff, he has like a stock uppercut. Uh, he has like a stock Rekka series. So if you're just going for like basic combos, that stuff's all there. That's all good. He has a demon stance. So he saw those wings from the other Belial Super, right? And this is not for show. Like he has multiple options. So off a of light, he just stomped down to the ground. And it can't hit the enemy, just FYI. But it gets funner when we hit other buttons. So, like, say, medium. So he does, like, a drilling dive kick, right? And uh, this is always advantage on block, no matter where it hits. Even if it hits at the top of their head, it is always plus on block. That's very strong. So you do not need to space this at all. You can just kind of go. And different buttons also give you different jumps as well. So just FYI, right? Uh, but yeah, that's really, really powerful. So we got a plus on block dive kick. Okay, I guess, I don't know, I, uh, it's rough. I, maybe I'll just block. I'll just block and wait him out. Okay, command grab. <laughs> so yeah, that's another thing out of this stance is uh, he's a command grabby boy. He's uh, very uh, disadvantageous if you want to sit still because either he grabs or he's plus on block. And whenever you think you're smart, oh, by the way, he has beams. And this is a very aggressive angle, as you can see here. And it's also holdable. And then we just get, like, the whole Devil Gin experience. A big sweeping beam that basically covers the entire screen, right? So, yeah, this is really, really all right as far as stances go. And if you want to go for the ultimate version, just teleports to wherever you are on the screen. And just attacks from there. And if you happen to block it, it's plus on block. And even more plus on block, right? So... To be anywhere on the screen at a moment's notice, as long as you have the meter, right? Pretty strong. That best case scenario for you to defend her is, okay, it's his turn anywhere on the screen. So, okay, now you're getting some of the ideas why he's a low health character, right? But he has another trait. A lot of his specials, 
if you hit the trade button when the move is done, he'll do a follow up. So that's just like a combo follow up, right? So normally this would be three hits and you can bop him again. And the damage actually scales pretty well. You always, you always get a pretty appreciable chunk in, but you do sacrifice your own life for this, right? So just like, you know, the heavier ultimate moves. Now, just like the other Belial though, if he, instead of just hitting the trait button after the end of the special, if you hit up and trait, he does that same stomp. And yes, it's plus on block. So he can take any special, even like the ones that are negative 16 on block. And he can turn that at the cost of a little life into being plus on block. So that's why, yes, a lot of the things, a lot of his best moves, he has to give up a little health and he's already very low health to begin with. But uh, his offense is definitely overwhelming. This is effectively like a playable boss character. It's always his turn. He can be on you whenever you want. His basic fireball is other people's like ultimates, right? They got to burn meter for something like that. And it's just, that's, that's just Tuesday for him, right? So yeah, a very powerful character, although with very defined drawbacks. And to top it all off, he has maximum spider. So there you go, right? Cool dude, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's Avatar Belial. And that is the roster for Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising. And hope you enjoyed the video. Hope that going through all these characters gave you a rough idea of you know what these characters are about, how they play, and who you might find interesting for yourself to play in the game. So before we close out, hey, if you could leave a like, these videos take a very long time to make. If you could leave a like, sincerely helps the video. Uh, if you got any questions, comments, say hey, post in the comments below. Or if you got a particular character you're a fan of, hey, tell me what you like about them. That all said, though, that is indeed the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some Grand Blue Fantasy versus. Right, I should just say go out and play some Grand Blue. That's way too long of a word. Go out and play some Grand Blue.